We've got our first, we have, he's almost here, let me just come up bow. Fish on, fish on. Peacock bass, there he is, yes. Yeah. Yes, get him in the boat. Oh, it's a snake head I think, Emily. Happy Halloween and welcome to today's Gale Force Twins episode. Now today we are fishing basically the canal systems of South Florida and we are literally right off the highway. So there's a highway 15 feet in front of me and 10 feet behind Emily. We will have to show you how close we are. But what's so cool about the South Florida canal systems is there are so many species you can catch. Peacock bass, snakeheads, Mayan cichlids, but you can also snook. snook and tarpon. So there's such a wide variety of species you can target. Now today, what we're hoping to do is catch a snakehead, clean and cook it. Now we've never tasted a snakehead before, but we've heard their meat is some of the best meat out there, which is kind of crazy to me because we don't eat a lot of freshwater species, so it's definitely gonna be a new experience. Be sure to stay tuned because in this video, we have partnered with Omaze, and you can have the chance to win the all-electric Hummer EV Edition 1. My name is Amanda, Emily's behind the camera, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Probably a good idea. I can it's see my fish. fish. What do you Hold think on. it's gonna be? It's a peacock bass. Peacock bass? I saw him already. There he is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Let's get him in the boat. Get him, get in, him the in the boat. boat. There we go. Peacock bass in the boat. We have the skunk off the boat and we just caught a peacock bass. Perfectly appropriate for Halloween because they can vary in bright orange colors. You can see he's kind of got a dark orange color to him, but some of them will be very, very bright orange. This is definitely a very dark peacock very bass. Very dark peacock bass. And I have noticed that like, if you're fishing really dark water, sometimes the fish will be darker and they light up once you catch them. So their colors vary like crazy. We got our peacock bass. They have a false eye on their tail. And Emily, I think we should release him. Before we get any further into this episode, we are so excited to be partnering with Omaze and give you all the chance to win the all-electric Hummer EV Edition 1 and support a great cause, Rebuilding Together. Rebuilding Together is a nonprofit charity that commits to neighbors in need and makes essential home repairs to help families and individuals stay in their home. They are also committed to aiding communities following the months and years after disasters, including natural disasters like Hurricane Ian. We are thankful to have been outside of Hurricane Ian's reach. We personally only experience tropical storm conditions. However, we know exactly what it's like to have a major hurricane go right over your home or your neighborhood. In 2017, Hurricane Irma, a category four, the eye of the storm went directly over our neighborhood and over our house. And thankfully, somehow, some way, the only damage we had was to our boat. However, we had friends and families lose their cars, their roofs, and their entire homes. We've even had friends have to live in a houseboat for years while they had to rebuild their home. Rebuilding Together creates and executes plans to address the specific needs of each community. Donations support the work of Rebuilding Together and gives you the chance to win the all-electric Hummer EV Edition 1. Just head to omaze.com forward slash galeforce T. Fish on! I told Amanda I said get the camera out. Rob the bit. Do you think it's another peacock? I don't know. I, it sounds like a. What did you just see it Let's or no? See. Yep, we have another peacock. We got our peacock bass. There we go. Get him in the boat, Emily. Swing, swing, swing. There he is. You see that little knob on his head forming? Let's see. It's really, really faint. Yes. But if you look see, at that, yes. that's how you know he's a male. Kind of like a male mahi, a bull mahi versus a cow mahi. The male mahis have that big square head and the peacocks kind of have that knob. Now this guy, 
he's not as knobby as some of the bigger <laughs> ones get, but he's definitely a male peacock bass. I think, Amanda, we are three for three on peacocks so fast. I think we have to make a move because if the peacocks keep, keep getting to the shiners before the snakeheads can, we're never gonna get a snakehead. I think head. it is time so let's to make, make a move and see if we can land our mysterious snakehead. Second bite, we actually traveled to a different culvert because the first one was just not It convincing. was just like a one and After done. After that first bite. Is he almost there? He's almost here. Let me just come up bow. Oh, it's a snake head, I think, Emily. No way. Yeah, it's a snake head. Nice. All right, should we swing this guy and hope he makes it in the boat? Well, you ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> one, two. There we go. In the boat. Catching the exotic species. South Florida has to offer. I'm so glad we caught a snakehead today. I feel like it's very on brand for Halloween. Wouldn't you say like a snakehead? It kind of creepy looking. Let's check this guy out. Now, the bull's eye snakehead. Now, I mean, first of all, we can look at their tail in case you're not sure why they're called that. Okay, but Amanda, there's also the bow fin, which has that same spot yes. on the tail. So there are there is the native bow fin, which is native to South Florida. And then there's the bullseye snakehead, which is non-native. And the bullseye snakehead, which is what we're looking at right now, is non-native because if you look at the anal fin, it basically starts halfway down the body and goes all the way to the tail. And I'll have a picture pop up of the native species. So you can kind of see the difference. So these guys are non-native. They're actually invasive. There is no requirements on um, keeping them. Basically means you can keep them at any size. You can keep as many of them as you want. And the meat in them is supposed to be excellent and it's known for having medicinal properties whatever that means so <laughs> basically these guys are supposed to be amazing to eat i've never eaten one before so i am so excited to take this guy to the play table see what the meat looks like see if it's nice and white and then get to the kitchen how exciting is that so this is our bullseye snakehead non-native we're gonna keep him we'll put him on some ice take him back and i don't know we'll just see if See All if, the rumors see of these guys tasty. are true, but I'm, I've heard they're very tasty. It is time to fillet our snakehead. Now, these guys originated in Asia, and they were brought over to America. There are multiple reasons people say they brought here. Some of the reasons include just for food, and some of them include the aquarium industry. And now, the aquarium industry is how we in South Florida end up with a large variety of invasive species, including this fish. So we're gonna fillet him and see what that meat looks like. First time filleting a snakehead. So I'm, I mean, I know how to fillet a fish, but this is my first time filleting this species. Well, good luck, Amanda. Thank you. reminds me of a sand tile. Yes, the freshwater version of a sand tile. Long and skinny, and you definitely have to work for the meat. Yeah, I would definitely say there's not as much meat on these guys as like I would have hoped. However, if you caught a few of them, you could or, definitely get or quite a bit. Or one large one. But now I have to cut out all this, which is like basically the rib cage. And there we have, I mean, what do you think the meat looks like? I think it looks fun. If bad. I didn't know this was a snake the meat head? of a snakehead, I would think it could have been a snapper. Or, or a sand, sand tile. tile. Sand tile. Most likely a sand tile. I'm gonna have a photo of a sand tile pop up so you can see how close a sand tile resembles a snakehead. Now, sand tiles are a fish, a saltwater fish, caught on the reef systems, usually pretty deep, 200 feet of water, and the snakehead is a freshwater fish native to Asia. We have our snakehead, and because this is a fish that we've never tasted before. We don't want to do too much, so we're just going right, to go so in. we are just going to use a the crazy Cajun seasoning, which basically is a one and done seasoning. So it's this is all we're going to put on it. It has salt, pepper, spices, seasonings in it. We're just going to put this on our fish and we're going to do a pan fry. Guys, this fish honestly smells so good. This is how I love to cook yellowtail snapper or any thin snapper fillets. You just kind of put the heat on a generally medium high heat 
quick pan sear with olive oil and one simple seasoning of choice. I'm just salt and pepper is enough. Sometimes I'll grab the Cajun seasoning, but this is how I love to cook. Like it's like a less is more recipe. We did our research and studies show that snakehead has the essential amino acid and fatty acids to accelerate wound healing. Kind of crazy. When you yes, think about and it. apparently it also has the ability to help basically flush your body of toxins is my understanding. So there is so, some research on the medicinal properties of this fish. So I'm pretty excited to try it out. If only it could solve GERD. 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 <laughs> Acid reflux disease. Okay, All right. I'm kind of terrified to try this because it's freshwater, but here we go. Cheers. Cheers. I would have absolutely no idea that that is snakehead if somebody didn't tell me. Honestly, it sounds like, sounds like, it tastes, it tastes like, like snapper, white, flaky. I mean, that's delicious. We hope you guys enjoyed coming with us to catch, clean, and cook this delicious snakehead with medicinal properties. In the meantime, we want you to get out there, have fun, and stay safe.